Welcome everybody. I moved to a new table because the previous one was too small. But still, I cannot fit all the computers I would like to talk about today. So the topic now is the Commodore Plus 4, 16 and 116, what I can call as the TED series. They say it was one of the flops of Commodore, but I just partially agree and let me explain why. I'm gonna split this video to three parts. The first part will be some history, then I'll talk about the technical part and what they released, and the third part will be the legacy. So let's start with the history. In 1982, Commodore was a well-established computer company, and they already manufactured the WIC-20, and then they started the C64. The new machine was one of the best on the market, but there was a problem with the C64. Its price was too high for the masses. Tremel had the saying he wanted to produce computers for the masses, not for the classes. So in 1983, he gave an order to produce a cheap computer. The cost of the C64 was high because it had so many chips, so we had the VIC, the SID, and so many memory whatsoever. And he looked for something really simplified. But if C64 was the leading computer on the market, why they required something cheap? The reason behind is very simple. The ZX Spectrum. It is a computer from the UK. And it was really, well, if you compare to the C64, it was not really sophisticated, but it was very, very cheap. Bilder started to work on the project and he designed a chip which was less intelligent than the SID and the WIC together, but it was a single chip. So he really simplified the computer and it was possible to produce a computer like this one. If we compare it to the Sinclair machine, then you can see the similarities. First of all, the size. So they have something similar size. And then the rubber keyboard. Yes, it, both of them has this not so good rubber keyboard, but this keyboard is very cheap. Few people call it dark gray. Sometimes they say it is black. I don't know, I'm a man, so I cannot really distinguish between more than 16 colors. For me, it is black, but we can call it very, very dark gray as well. So this machine was really the first aim. But what happened later on with the machine? In 1984, January, on the CS, they introduced the first prototypes, but something happened there. There were some arguments between Jack Tremel and Irving Goud, and because of that, the founder and CEO Jack Tremel left the company. After the departure of the strongman, the project started to fall apart in the meaning of the aim changed. The new management was not aware of the real target, so they started to build this little machine to something like the plus four. So instead of the small, dirty, cheap machine, they started to develop something based on the same text editor chip, so the TED chip, with the same functionality. So they started to design something which had no sense. Why do I say it had no sense? Because with the additional software and bigger packaging and new design, the price of the computer started to increase as well. And when it was released, there were only two problems. They tried to sell this new machine on the same price as the C64. How can you sell something which knows less than the predecessor or the other machine for the same price. It makes no sense, right? The second was the incompatibility. So it was not compatible with the C64. They were not able to reuse the existing software library. As I mentioned a lot of times the price, let's talk about it a little bit. So if you produce a computer like this one, or you produce, this is the C16, if you produce this machine, yeah, you can see the difference in size. Also, the difference in the keyboard. So, if you produce the motherboard, the cost of the PCB and the chips is just a fragment of the full price. Because the final price contains not just the electronical parts, but a lot of other things. So, the keyboard, if you have a bigger case, then of course the box will be much bigger. If you have a bigger box, you can ship less in the same container. So, everything costs more and more and more. Let me open the box to show you the third model. If I compare the three models, the 116 and the plus 4, 
they are really similar just the plus four is much much bigger it is a proper keyboard and the first time it has much better cores or keys i really like them compared to the other models the c16 this model really looks like as the commodore 64 the casing is the same so this one is a derivative of the wic 20 just in black or dark gray the ports are different from the c64 so it has a power connector luckily this one has the same as the commodore 64 but there are a lot where we have this squared one it is a serial so this is where i can connect the standard floppy disk drive or other equipments but the others were changed so the cassette port the interface port memory expansion the joystick ports and the video yeah the video cable can be also reused but i don't know why they changed the ports for the joysticks it makes totally no sense i already said several times for this computer makes no sense yeah this this change for the for the data set i don't know why they changed it it would be possible at least for the joysticks to have two ports here or on the side it makes <laughs> no sense as i said so they had to produce a separate data set for this series so this is the new data set and it is really the very same as the data set for the c64 only the connector is different and the color these small changes are increasing the price and introduce some kind of incompatibility because you need some converter so the customer had to pay for those adapters and it also increased the price let's open one of the machines and see what is inside compared to the c64 it is a very simple machine the c16 has only one incoming power so this is the power section we have the cpu this one is a derivative of the 6502 but it is based on mosfet so it is consuming less power it is running on a much higher frequency but in fact it is not 75 percent faster than the c64 because the memory access is not granted all the time so it has to wait for the the, the other chip but in fact it is at least 25 percent faster than the c64 and if we are not using the screen it can be turned off then it can be way faster than the c64 so this is the chip i already praised this is the tech chip as far as i know it is an acronym for the text editor and it is responsible for the audio and the video at the same time the video resolution is 320 by 200 and this small machine is able to produce at once yeah i can say 128 colors because it would make sense but because it is using different intensity and different intensity levels for black is always black this is why the color palette is reduced to 121 colors it is much more than the c64 16 colors in the other hand it lost its capability to handle sprites so while the c64 can handle multiple sprites and collision and whatsoever this small chip is not able to do that so everything has to be done by the cpu on the sound side it has two channels it can be programmed it is not so exciting but if we compare the video and the sound capabilities to the zx spectrum then we can say it is much better it is much better because it can handle much more colors and it has two channels instead of a single channel but it is not that simple to say it has two times more capability than the zx spectrum but we are not so far from the fruit someone replaced the original app roms in this machine and i'm going to talk about it a little bit later why there were a lot of reviews after the release of these machines and they were well somewhere between the disappointed and not so kind so let me defend a little bit these computers i think the original plan was fine this computer with 16k of memory with the sound and video capabilities could fight very well against the zx spectrum it could be cheap dirty cheap as bill Hurt said small nice and successful but they blotted it to this one i think it was not fault of the machine but it was fault of the management you can see the size difference but you cannot see the software inside 
In one hand, they really enhanced on top of the C64. The new basic, the 3.5, really increased the usability of the machine. They included a lot of instructions to handle the sound and the graphics. In the C64, you have to use pokes or other methods to access really to the BIC and the SID, while here it is very simple to program the sound or the video from BASIC. In the PLUS4 they introduced four additional softwares, but they were really simplified because they had to include these into the ROMs, while it was not possible to use them with the dataset. All of the articles pointed at the price problem, and they were really right, because in 1985 Commodore stopped the production of the TED series. I read numbers somewhere between half a million and 820, more than half of them were sold out in Europe. While the production was stopped in mid-1985, these machines were on the market up to 1988. There are two interesting facts. As soon as they reduced the price dramatically, they started to sell pretty well. Retail stores like Sears originally offered the Plus 4 for $299.95. Now on this special TV offer, you can order the Commodore Plus 4 for only $99.95 complete. That's a fraction of what you'd expect to pay for the built-in software alone. And they sold a lot of them to Hungary. The other fact is that the original design, so the 116, this is the least common of them. I think half of the TED series was the Plus 4 and almost the same amount of the 16. But this small machine is still a kind of rarity. I mentioned these machines as killers for the Hungarian computers. I'm removing this one and putting here the other machine, which was one of the assassins. So these two machines were the killers of the Hungarian computers. Why? There was a company called Novotrade who started to import these machines and they sold them to schools. They participated in the school computer program. I made a video about the TVC, which was the competitor of these machines. And additionally to the schools, a lot of them found their ways to the homes. This machine arrived recently. I need to repair it, but I include this because this machine was a school computer. We can see that here because they replaced the APRO and they introduced the Hungarian characters. I don't know if it is possible to see but if I push it here, you can see the special Hungarian characters. So the E, U, Ö. So those are kind of like the German umlauts. This machine was able to handle these Hungarian characters. The schools prefer these machines because of multiple things. The first one was the price. This computer was much cheaper than the TVC. The Plus 4 had the same 64 kilobytes memory. The basic was better because it included a lot of additional instructions to handle the sound and video as I've mentioned already. And even it had a monitoring program. So it was possible to teach advanced programming, so the CPU machine language on these computers. But there was still a problem, lack of software. It was not a real issue in a school because they developed their own programs and to teach programming, well, it's not necessary to have a lot of uh, games or whatsoever, but still, for the home users, it caused some problem. Since so many machines were sold in Hungary, those kids started to form a community. Even if some people said it's an ugly duckling, they started to complain about it. I know it is still not a pink flamingo soaring the sky, but it was really not that bad. And those kids started to port games from other computers to the Plus 4. There were many teenagers and few of them are still active. And they are working on compos and games and many more things. There are new hardware for the machines. For example, this one is a floppy emulator. Because there was a floppy design for these machines. They were much faster than the original 1541 for the Commodore C16s and the Big 20s. And this one is a memory expander. And also there is a replacement for the TED chip. It's a great achievement because these machines are not as stable as the C64s and it's harder to get the chips for them. No one knows why, but the CPUs and the TED chips tend to fail after a while. Next to the hardware, there are new software developments as well. 
those are really exploiting the capabilities of these computers. Let me close this video with a few of them. I wish you a nice day. Enjoy these games. Goodbye.